Thank you for organizing and making sure everybody's here. Um, tonight we'll be hearing from the candidates for Hamilton City, or Hamilton County Municipal Court District 2. Um, so we'll give those candidates a chance to come up and say a few words. And then if you have some questions for them, we can have them answer some questions too. Um, so there are three candidates. Uh, this year you'll be, you'll be voting for one. Um, the candidates are Bertha Garcia Helmick. Um, I don't believe she's here at this time. And then uh, the other candidate who we'd like to come up and speak now is Dante Johnson. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for uh, welcoming me and having me here uh, this evening to speak to you all. Again, my name is Dante Johnson, and I am running for judge of Hamilton County Municipal Court. I am endorsed by the Democratic Party to run for judge of Municipal Court, and I'm the only candidate that's endorsed by the Democratic Party that's running for a judge this year. Municipal Court covers initial uh, felony arraignments, uh, misdemeanor crimes, and civil cases where the dispute is $15,000 or less. Uh, I'm running for a judge because I believe all people are entitled to equal access to justice, no matter what they look like, where they come from, who they know, or how much money they have. Uh, I'm from Cincinnati, grew up in the West End and right up the road in Avondale. When I was in high school, I used to come down and play basketball at the pavilion. We would always get our cousins or somebody who lived in the area to sign us in and let us play. <laughs> because the courts were so great, so thank you for that. And then I would go to the subway across the street and give me a $5 foot long and just enjoy being here in, in this uh, community. I still come here, I go to Dot's Shoe Repair, been going to him for forever, I'm sure you, you know him very well. Um, grew up in West End Avondale, as I was saying. I'm a graduate of Clark Montessori High School, graduate of Howard University in uh, Washington, D.C., and graduate of the University of Cincinnati College of Law. I've been an attorney for over 10 years now, Spent a lot of my career as a public defender, first in municipal court, then in the common police court. I've successfully tried cases as minor as uh, disorderly conduct and as major as aggravated murder. After several years as a public defender, I joined the Cincinnati Metropolitan Housing Authority as in-house counsel. And while I was there, I fought to cut the eviction doctrine in half and also fought to bring in hundreds of thousands of dollars in uh, tenant assistance for the residents uh, for their rent, for uh, school uniforms, for all sorts of things to make sure that uh, they were safe in the community. And I also used that position to make sure that uh, the people who lived there were safe and not causing dangers or other things like that to the community. Uh, I want to be the judge of second chances. I want to help people who come before me. If it's somebody who didn't graduate from high school, I want to help them get their GED. If it's somebody who's not working, I want to help them enter a trade program and complete that trade program. Because a trade can completely change someone's life. Uh, without the burden of student loan debt, you can make a great living. And I think the way to rein crime in and rein these different things in is to give people opportunity so they don't have to come uh, in and out of the justice system and uh, to reduce recidivism. So thank you all for having me today. I'd ask for your support uh, during the early voting and uh, no on November 2nd. And I'll be here to answer any questions that are asked of me. Thank you. And Elizabeth Ty, if you would like to come up, thank you. Good afternoon. My name's Elizabeth Ty, and I am an attorney. I've been practicing law over 18 years. I'm a former prosecutor, former public defender, and for the last 13 years, I've been in private practice. I handle criminal cases, probate cases, family law. I've practiced in just about, over the last 18 years, every court in Ohio, including the Supreme Court of Ohio. Um, the reason I'm running is because I think experience matters. You want someone with a wide breadth of experience. That's what you need as a judge. Um, I also run in because I'm tied to this community. I live in North Avondale on Redbud, so I'm about three minutes away. Um, I had the privilege to live there with my husband and our three children. I think it's important that a community, like in municipal court, there's seven districts. This is district two. And I think it's important that the community has a voice on the bench. Um, 
there's no requirement that you live in the district to run for this seat, but I think it's important. I think it's important that people of the community have a voice on the bench. Municipal court deals with misdemeanors, domestic violence, OVIs, simple assaults. We do handle the arraignments for felony cases, but the only part that we play in that is setting a bond. The vast majority of cases that you will hear in municipal court are those like domestic violence, traffic offenses. And when you think about those types of cases, they're often people's first point of contact. And so the court needs to have answers to problems, because oftentimes with, say, a driving under suspension, it's often because they don't have insurance. So encumbering them with fines and probations and court costs really doesn't solve the overall problem. But coming up with programs to help people get insured so that they're validly licensed is really a quality of life and it makes a difference to the community as a whole. I'm asking for your vote. October 5th is when early voting started. Um, the general election, as you know, is November 2nd. I am a Democrat. I'm a lifelong Democrat. I wasn't endorsed by the party, but I'm still running. And I'm running because I think experience matters. And having ex I'm the only candidate that lives in the district and has experience on both sides of the aisle. And you know, I just think when you look at a judge, you want them to know the law, to be able to apply the law, and to be fair and impartial in rendering their decisions. There's some things that you can't learn on the job. You have to have lived experience. Myself, I'm 47. I wasn't a traditional law student. I worked for the federal government prior to going to law school. I was a bank examiner for FDIC. And I say that because you want some, and before, while I was an undergrad, I, okay, I worked at the post office. But I think it's important to have someone who with lived experience sitting on a bench. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, did anybody have any questions for either of our candidates? Any questions? No? Okay, well thank you both so much for, for being here and for speaking to us and for giving us a few minutes to get to know you. Um, did anybody else have anything? No, okay. Uh, we're gonna move on to St. Bernard Elmwood Place School Board. We're gonna introduce the candidates. Um, we're just gonna be introducing them and there, there will be a chance if you have a question. Um, again, you'll be voting for three and our candidates, if you'll stand up, Mark Fleek. And Jason McMullen. And uh, Mickey Spears, unfortunately, is not able to make it due to an eye surgery. Um, so did anybody have any questions for our school board candidates? No? OK. Um, we'll move on then. Again, these are just going to be introductions as well. But if you'll stand up, uh, President of Council, uh, Steve Asbach. Back there, OK. <laughs> And Treasurer John Ungrui, uh, Council First Ward Bob Culbertson, Council Second Ward Ray Culbertson, Council Third Ward Don DeBerkey, and Council Fourth Ward Chris Schildmeyer. <laughs> And then we have council at large, there will be three, uh, you'll be voting for three. Um, the first is not able to make it tonight, she's a bit under the weather, but I do have a letter from her, so I'm going to read that. And that's from Cindy Bettinghouse. Uh, Cindy says, good evening, I'm sorry I will not be able to join you tonight, I've been under the weather the past few days. My name is Cindy Bettinghouse, I'm running for re-election for council at large. I've had the privilege of representing you for the past 14 years and I'm looking forward to serving you for another two years. I was born and raised in St. Bernard and am married to Roger Bettinghouse. We have six children that we raised in St. Bernard and attended St. Clement's grade school and Roger Bacon High School. My family has been very much a part of this great village in several different ways. My dad was a St. Bernard firefighter and my father-in-law was a previous vice mayor. We opened up the penthouse bowling lanes in the shopping center in 1975. After that adventure, we opened the Lost Corner. We also own several pieces of property in St. Bernard. By being a business owner and a landlord, I've been able to be the voice for business owners and landlords, and I will continue being that voice over the next two years. 
I've had the privilege of working with three administrators, Bill Burkhart, John Estep, and Jonathan Stuchel. Over the last 14 years, there have been some hard times and some tough decisions that have had to be made. I asked questions of a variety of people in order to make sure I had the information before voting on an issue that came to council. Most important, I listened to the citizens who I represent before voting. My career in nursing over the last 37 years has served me well in this position as a council member. Attributes needed in my career, being accountable, compassionate, a team player, responsible, caring, and a relationship builder are also essential for this position on council. Thanks for your support in the past, and I am asking for your vote again on November 2nd. So that was from Cindy. And next we have Kurt Brickway. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kurt Brickwag. Um, this will be my first attempt in running for council at large. Um, what inspired me to step forward and, and come to this decision in my life? My brother passed last October. Uh, he was a Cincinnati firefighter for 33 years. And it made me think of my childhood and how good my brother and I, my sister, had it. Um, my dad was a police officer here in town for 27 years, and uh, it just, it, it made me want to give back to the community instead of just sitting back and, and, and enjoying everything. So with that, um, what I want to see, my, my kind of, my goals that I want to work towards is to keep our infrastructure strong as far as our parks go. I've seen our parks kind of deteriorate over the last decade and I would like to see that go back to the beautification that I remember a little bit in the past so and with that also is our recre or our recreation for our youth I think it's a very important thing for the kids to have the whole gamut of sports from very very young to all the way up to knothole which I enjoyed as a child or a young, youngster, and I, I want to see that s kept. I, you know, as a city wages battles with monetary financial decisions and cutting, making cutbacks, I want to make sure this, this is something that we don't cut back. Um, and with that, I, I ask for your support um, November 2nd, and I hope that I have your vote. Thank you very much. Okay, and next up, Nicole Klungel. Hi, nice to see you all. Um, first, I wanna thank Don Teberg T for hosting this event. He does it every time, and I'm truly grateful that he takes that initiative. Um, also, thanks to ICRC for taping and broadcasting this. It's a val valuable service. Um, I'm Nicole Klungel. I'm running for council at large. Uh, a lot of you have seen me in council meetings, uh, so you already know I'm a little different from the usual bench of candidates. Um, there are a few things that do make me different from other candidates um, and that work for you. One of them is uh, I was not born and raised in St. Bernard. My husband and I made this our home about 20 years ago. And why does that work for you? Well, that works for you because I didn't grow up here. The policies aren't raised into me, if that makes sense. I'm gonna ask questions. Why do we do things the way they do? If somebody says, well, that's the way we've always done it, I'm gonna ask why. Why do we do it that way? Um, what was the initial reason that we did it that way? Um, is that the way we should keep doing it? Uh, second, I volunteer a ton uh, inside and outside St. Bernard on causes and organizations that have policies um, that affect St. Bernard and other communities. Um, for instance, I edit the Village Newsletter. I started it, well, not solely, of course. I helped start it and I've edited every issue. Uh, you've also seen me probably on city council meetings advocating for various policy improvements. 
those come from volunteering uh, and learning from other organizations, forward thinking policies that help a community grow and improve. Uh, and third, I'm, I'm a progressive, not, not an orange and black progressive, but like the progressive as it's come to be known in the political circles, as somebody who uh, really seeks out forward thinking, cutting edge policies. Um, St. Bernard is not an island, we know that. We know that it changes over time. Uh, we can't stay static or we'll stagnate. So the direction we need to go, um, obviously we don't just move forward, we move up. Uh, and the way we do that is, is through policy and practice. Uh, for example, we can legally protect civil rights. Businesses look for that kind of ordinance when they look for communities to move into. Uh, we could review our codified ordinances to see if there's something in there that shouldn't be. For instance, do we need an ordinance banning fortune telling? Probably not. Are there things that should be in there that aren't? Definitely. Um, you've seen me talk about transparency with Ohio's sunshine laws. Unfortunately, I think the village is still courting some lawsuits there and I'd like to limit the village's liability. Um, we've had some ethics policy violations in the past. We need an ethics policy. Um, I'm getting uh, the sign from Don DeBerg. He usually he uses a lot more words when he tells me to shut up. <laughs> um, so early voting has started. If you need any information about my campaign, please contact me, and I am on Facebook at Nicole Klungel for St. Bernard. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Oh, did you want to have a seat? Yeah. And next up, Brian Rolfson. You too. Good evening. I'd like to first thank everyone for attending tonight. I'd also like to thank Dr. Mr. Don Taberkey for hosting this event. I'm excited to speak tonight to share a little bit about myself. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Brian Rolfson. I am a lifelong St. Bernard resident. I grew up on Cleveland Avenue and now live on West Ross Avenue behind the shopping center. I attended the St. Bernard Public Schools and graduated from St. Bernard and Wood Place High School. I then went on to acquire my associate degree in health information technology from Mercy College of Ohio. I'm currently attending the University of Cincinnati to pursue my bachelor's degree in health information management. I work for a large health, nationwide healthcare organization that works with Bon Secours, Mercy Health, um, as, long, as well as some other major healthcare organizations across the country. Uh, I have been part of my, my company's community outreach committee for the past two years. We do monthly charitable events such as back to school drives um, to gather school supplies and backpacks for family in need. Uh, we also do Toys for Tots in November. Um, I really enjoy giving back to the community I work in as well as the community I live in. So I'd like to briefly talk about why I'm running for Village Council this election and a few of my goals I would like to achieve. First, I would like to bring youth and a new mind to council to help shape the future of St. Bernard. Each term, we see the same people get elected, and while I have the utmost respect for everyone that's currently on council, I feel it is time we bring change to the village. I am passionate about this community, and I wanna help see it thrive and continue to grow. By running this upcoming election, my goal is to encourage the younger generation to be more involved. The reason why I've chosen to stay in St. Bernard is because I'm proud to be such of a tight-knit community. Growing up, I enjoyed all the amenities and events that St. Bernard had to offer, such as the 4th of July fireworks, the festival, the summer concerts in the park. These events bring us closer together as a community, and for the outsiders that may attend these events, it encourages them to want to move to St. Bernard. I want to be a voice for all the residents to not only answer their questions, but make sure their, their questions and concerns are heard and addressed. In conclusion, I want to leave you with this final thought. If you are content the way the village has been run in the past, I encourage you to vote as you have. If you'd like to see change and new minds on council, I would ask you to vote for me this November. And I want to thank you, and I wish good luck to everyone running this election. Thank you, Brian. And our final candidate for council at large also is unable to make it. 
and that is Patty Halsfeld, that she did send a, a brief note. Um, she said, I want to thank everyone for coming tonight to meet the candidates. I also want to apologize to everyone for not being here tonight, but I got a chance to go with my brother and my mother on a small vacation, and since I live with my mom and help take care of her, I needed to go. I'm honored to have served on council on and off for 12 years. I have also enjoyed working with the current council and administration on all issues that have come before us. I enjoy talking to the residents and hearing the concerns you all have for St. Bernard and keeping an open mind about all topics. If anyone would like to contact me and express your ideas or concerns, my phone number is 288-6300 and it's always on. I ask for your support on November 2nd by voting Patty Hausfeld for council at large. And so now we'd like to open it up if anybody has any questions for our council at large candidates. And if not, I have a couple that somebody passed me. Okay. Will each of you support term limits if elected? And if not, why? Would you like me to go first? Oh. I've done some research on that. That would take a charter amendment to change the uh, to do term limits. So I know Jonathan's got a, a gentleman coming in discussing the charter changes with people. That's one thing I'll suggest and see where it goes. But it would take a charter change. It seems like some of these are meant for um, <coughs> current council members. Uh, we'll go to, would you agree to not take money if you miss a meeting? Anyone? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, yeah, so I, I really don't think we have any, I, I don't think the others um, really, really work out in this situation. So <laughs> we'll skip the questions. Anybody else? No? All right. Well, I want to thank all the candidates for being here. Um, thanks to Don Taberkey again for organizing it. Thanks to everyone who came out and uh, supporting everybody. And uh, wish you all luck in November. Thank you. Thank you.